Hey guys, what's up? Channer here again, and today we're going to be talking about Barbarian stats. We're going to be talking about what stats are good, what stats aren't good, and where each of those stats should go. Before we get started, um, there are all different builds with the Barbarians. You could you could play um, Furious Charge right now is the cookie cutter build, um, but the stats in general can be applied to almost every build there might be a few changes like one build you might need a different amount of cooldown reduction and you know you might be playing around with different elemental damage or you know different skills like this one's furious charge if you were playing leap quake you'd want to get earthquake damage on your shoulders and maybe your chest right all right so with that said let's just hop right into it guys let's just hop right into it we're gonna start off with the most important thing and that is a weapon now before we get started i want to say something that everyone should know is that when you're looking at a weapon especially for a barbarian it does depend on the skill you're using but skills are cal calculated by weapon percent damage all right so if you look at a skill like furious charge well i mean i can't really show that one because furious charge with the ray core set does it's not 600 percent it gets the 1,050% applied to it because Raycor set applies every rune to it. So, it's 1,050% weapon damage is fire. So, that's a multiplicative of not your DPS, but the number below that. The 3,799 to 4,464. That's what is calculated. So, attack speed on a weapon will raise the DPS... But it won't touch that number. It won't touch that average damage. So it kind of falsely inflates the DPS. So be careful with that. Getting attack speed on a weapon. Even though it raises your DPS on the weapon. Falsely like I said. It's like the same as getting attack speed on your gloves. Which doesn't raise your weapon DPS right? Okay. So with that said. I mean. There are some builds and some classes out there that can make use of attack speed and it is good in some senses. Like attack speed adds flat damage to Call of the Ancients. And, you know, that that could work out in a sense. But anyways, let's just get to the weapon stats. Alright, so the three really, really big stats are first the average damage. This the stat right underneath the, the word primary, the first stat average damage that's really important i mean it could roll you know really really towards the bottom end on the minimum and maximum each have their own roles so you could get a really low minimum maximum you can get a really high one um you can go to you can't really see you can only see the lowest minimum damage roll that you can get and the highest maximum damage roll you can get here it so in order to see what the what the roles can be you gotta go to the enchantress on an unenchanted weapon and select the damage and see what you could potentially get but when you get a role that's really 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 low like almost next to the minimum rolls and you don't have percent damage you're probably better off rolling the average damage up and there is an equation to figure that out i'll put it in the description so if you ever run into a situation like that you could use the calculation and that'll help you the next stats that are important strength is actually really important here because you can get a huge amount of strength and strength is really good i mean for each point of strength you're getting one percent damage now everything is calculated really weird in diablo there's all different pools so there are certain things that all get added up into a pool so if you have like 9,431 percent here and then another thing in the same pool gives like a thousand percent it's all added up and then that percentage is you know multiplied by whatever your weapon damage and then the next pool you know gets added up and multiplied by that result and then the next pool so certain certain thing certain um increases are, are in certain pools and there is a really good form post and again i will link that in the description below so if you want to understand like where each source of damage comes from like if you look at a gem like toxin gem that um all enemies you poison take 10 percent increased damage from all sources that's in the debuff pool that is in the debuff pool um 
So something like strong arm bracers would share that pool. So if you had strong arm bracers that makes mobs take 30% extra damage um, after being knocked back, then it would get added to also the toxin gem. That would get added to 40% increase instead of um, multiplying it by 30% and then taking that result and multiplying it by 10%. Things don't work like that. So if you really, really want to get technical about it and you really want to understand how everything is calculated because, you know, the game is is really complex and all the mathematics are kind of just made up and it's, you know, it gets a little confusing. There's just a lot to it. Like I said, if you want to understand it, then you, I'll put the link in the description below. You could check that out and read up on it. Um really good information to have really good inf information to have if not you really don't have to understand it you just need to know what's the meta and you know what's what's best like something like bane of the trapped and the reason why it's so good is it's 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 in its own pool it's it's in its own so basically it's just another multiplicative by itself which will you know not get added up with other percentages and then multiplied it'll be a separate multiplicative because every time you multiply your damage you're getting a bigger increase if you just took all your increases added all that stuff up and then multiplied it by your weapon damage it wouldn't be as high as some of the results we get here if that makes any sense so i'm glad you guys understand all that now let's just talk about the best stats um i'm just going to try to go over them without as much detail as I possibly could just purely because this video would be really really long if I talked about each individual stat all right so on your weapons stats that are really good like I said average damage percent damage and strength now percent damage is going to be better than something like elite damage because percent damage adds straight to your weapon damage which is where your damage starts so by increasing that base number, you're making each point of elite damage worth more. And that's why percent damage is going to be better. And it's also going to add damage to white mobs. So all around just better. You got to prioritize that before elite damage. Now on my furnace, I could get elite damage instead of cooldown reduction. But in some cases, you just want cooldown reduction. In some cases, you don't need it. It really depends on your build. For the build I'm playing Furious Charge, you only need like 37% cooldown reduction so that you could reset your charge when hitting three mobs. But uh, the more you get, the better. You can get more uptime on your Wrath and your Call of the Ancients. Um, if you're using Chilanic Chain, 50% cooldown reduction and you can keep the, the movement speed buff up 100% of the time. So I have almost 50% to do that. So it's going to increase the speed of my runs that way and you know it has to be very tailor tailored to your spec and what exactly are you doing now what makes other weapons good that aren't furnace is that they could roll elemental skill like the maximus has fire skill that's another good prioritization so on this maximus right here those are the best stats that you could want you want obviously the fire skill the percent damage the strength and a socket you could get an extra stat which is a socket through an item called a gift it, it drops in torment and it's just a consumable item you right click it you apply it to a weapon that doesn't have a socket so if you have a socket rolled onto a weapon when it drops and you don't roll that off and you re-roll a different stat you'll never be able to gift that weapon and get the fifth stat so be careful with that so like I said, cooldown reduction, elite damage um, as the last thing. But those are all the good stats on weapons. Like I said, attack speed, eh. Secondary stat on a weapon, life after kill is a really, really good source of healing. It's really powerful, better than you think. So definitely, um, if you could get that, that's it's really, really nice. It's not something you should prioritize or really worry about. But when comparing, like, should I use this weapon or that weapon? Consider life after kill because it's going to be a lot of healing when you got it on multiple key pieces of gear or at least have it on your weapon. You're going to be killing little bullshit white mobs and getting healed for tons. Alright, let's go over rings and I'm not going to go over the SOJ because my SOJ right here isn't perfect. If I got like a natural socket, I could have re-rolled the strength to crit damage or 
cooldown reduction. I actually have a fire skill uh, SOJ that has 40% crit damage, 20 fire, 30 elite damage. Um, that's a really good one. But unity right here, um, a really good unity is the 6 crit chance, the 15 elite damage, and then either the cooldown, the crit damage, or the crit chance. Crit damage and crit chance you want on a 1 crit chance to 10 crit damage ratio just because they work off each other. If you had a thousand crit damage, but you had 1% crit chance, then neither of those, like, well, crit chance would start to become worth a ton, but the thousand crit chance is gonna be worth, eh. You're gonna be way better getting 50 crit chance and 500 crit damage, because they work off each other. So try to keep that, you know, relatively even. All right, let's just go along the way. Raycor gloves, well, gloves in general, but Gloves in general, you want the strength, the crit damage, the crit chance, and the cooldown. That's standard. That's pretty much all the way around. Just the best stats you could get. This doesn't really change along the lines anywhere. Unless you start looking at other gloves, but even other gloves for a barb usually aren't worth using. Um, okay. <sighs> Shoulders. Vow words for this particular build, you know, it's furious charge damage. But getting the strength, vitality, and vitality is worth a little more than all res on items because if you look, look at a gem, look at a gem, a vitality gem gives you like 200 and something, um, what it, uh, the 280 for the max vitality gem, but a resistance gem gives you, uh, 78 resistance. So on a piece of gear, your the vitality is pretty much doubled. The resistance isn't. Anyways, in long, just just comparing it mathematically for survivability and everything, um, vitality is worth a little more. So strength, vitality, get that cooldown reduction on your shoulders. It's great. And then whatever main skill you're using, it depends on your skill and what pool it rolls into. Because there are certain skills that go on, you know, your shoulders and your chest, and those are connected. And there are other skills that could be on your helm and your boots, and then your pants and your and your belt those are like generator like fury generator like your main skills the really really low damage ones and usually you're never worrying about those okay so that's shoulders helm we're looking for strength vitality crit chance and that's pretty standard again vitality especially on on the helm is worth way more than like resist or whatever but those those are the priority stats if you happen to get strength all res, crit chance, it's usable, you can do it, whatever, you know, just, uh, you know, try to get these stats, but strength and crit chance are the most important, the most important on the helm. We're gonna go to chest, alright, again, we're gonna go for the strength and vitality and the furious charge damage, again. Um, again, three sockets, three sockets, extremely important here, and now this is where, if you needed the resistance, this is where you get it. You slot the resistance into your uh, sockets on your chest and your pants. If you needed it. If. If not, you go with the rubies. Alright. Belt. On the belt, we're going to be going with strength, vitality, all res, and life percent. Um, life percent instead of life per fury. Because life per fury, we're getting like 5k... From the ignorance is bliss the 1k or so that you can get on the belt it's not big enough to matter so the percent life getting 15 percent life is really big especially when you're getting all the vitality everywhere else it's just worth more in terms of survivability pants very standard strength vitality resist sockets boots we're gonna want strength vitality resist and movement speed now movement speed getting that allows it so that in your paragon points you don't have to put as many points into movement speed all right actually i need to reset that so by saving let's see i need to get 15 points here okay so by saving 20 points of movement speed i'm getting an extra 100 strength on my boots essentially now, in other builds, I mean, if there is something you could you could put like whirlwind damage there if you want a whirlwind build, then by far 
that would be better. But if that's not the case and you're not using a skill on the boot slots, get the movement speed because you get essentially an extra 100 strength out of it and it's pretty good. Let's go ahead and max that up. By the way, shift clicking when you're adding points puts them in at 10 at a time. So just a little tip. All right. We already went over the ring. Um, bracers, pretty standard. Actually, these bracers are wrong, but I was just doing T6, so I was being lazy and just leaving the Nemesis bracers. Um, these aren't my normal bracers. Anyways, uh, elemental damage, strength, vitality again over resistance, even though I have resistance there. That's not right. It's just I'm using these because of the high damage on them. Um, and... A crit chance six percent crit chance um and yeah that's just pretty standard again like i said okay and now necklace there's a ton of different necklaces for all different things that you could do um and generally the best stat well this necklace actually rolls one extra stat and this necklace is extremely hard to get um crit damage is the number one stat on a necklace socket is the number two stat so crit damage and socket you always want those on every necklace and crit damage is so important because we're using a two-hander we only have one crit damage gem instead of having two so we're gonna have lower crit chance uh crit damage to crit chance and remember i said we want this one to ten ratio just to make them kind of work off each other and get the most out of each stat if you have 60 if you only have like 300 crit damage and you have like 55 crit chance it's you're not getting the most out of those stats so crit damage and socket most important and then after that you want the crit chance after that comes elemental damage after that comes strength and then you know you could rotate here and there what you want if you need cooldown you could replace one of those stats for cooldown um I think with the new ancient items, if you manage to get like a thousand strength, it's worth a little bit more than elemental skill. I haven't done the calculations yet, honestly. It's something new. So don't quote me on that. It's going to be really even, but um, I'll try to find out and put an annotation. I apologize for that. I, I completely forgot. Um, but with necklaces, again, there's all different types of necklaces, immunity necklaces, and all these different things. Like I said, just try to prioritize on those on the socket and the crit damage. Those are very important. You definitely want the three sockets between all your jewelry and almost every build because there's so many good gems that you could use and they're just worth so much more than regular stats. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. That's pretty much it. Those are my stats. Um, What you guys should be looking at. Um, I apologize. This video was... A little bit long but i just wanted to go into detail with each stat that you should be looking for on each piece of gear just so you guys can get a better understanding and instead of having to ask what's best you understand what's best and why it's best because understanding things in diablo is what's going to make you a good player so if you got to this point in the video i have to say you know or if you've been watching my videos in full there's a lot of people who don't and just want instant gratification and that's that's not how you learn that's not how you become a better player i know all this stuff because i've been putting in like 10 hours a day for the past year in diablo i have over 3,000 hours i didn't come to know all this by looking at a little five minute video it's a lot of things that you need to know in diablo to really understand and play the game well so um Thank you guys, thank you guys, and I, I really, you know, anyone who got here, I'm really happy that you took the time out of your day to actually fully hear me out, and that is awesome, guys, so thank you so much. Um, if you want, um, like, subscribe, share, like I said, I hope this video was, was helpful. Um, if you want, leave a comment below, I'll try to get to all of them. Honestly, I've been getting a lot of comments lately, and it's been getting a little hard for me to keep up, but... I am trying my best. I'll try over time. I might not get back to you right away, but I will try over time to um, get get to what you guys are asking. If you want, you could always check out my live stream at twitch.tv slash Um, You know, I'm always, I'm there. So if I'm there and you got some questions, 
um, not general questions, because if you ask me something like, how do I play the Barbarian, or how do I improve, like I said, I could talk for days and days and days, so, you know, very specific questions, like, you know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know, I don't know, something, something very specific, like, uh, how does strong arm work, how does strong arm bracers work now, something like that, and by the way, they work, by your furious charge doesn't pull anymore so the mobs you charge through don't get strong arm bracer debuff but the mobs that you hit at the end with the frontal cone you can see the little animation of a frontal cone like along there get knocked up into the air and those mobs that get knocked up get the debuff and take more damage so you know things like that that i can answer you know within reasonable time because i am trying to do a lot of different things and i've been putting a lot of work into my stream recently and into youtube and i want to thank you guys because i've been getting a really really in big increase in in viewership and and you guys have been really awesome and just keep watching i'll, I'll keep doing what i'm doing and really awesome guys really awesome thank you so much and i'll see you tomorrow